Right, so I'm going to show you how to easily transfer files with Netcat. Now, Netcat is a very, very easy tool. I'm going to show you how to use this. And also, I'm pretty sure you know what Netcat is. You use Netcat all the time in CTFs if you obviously are uh, not a beginner in, in hacking. If you are, then you're just going to find out what Netcat is. Right, so if you start up, what you need to do, if you want to send files to the device, for example, if I'm sending from, for example, I want to send from the server to my Kali machine. So Kali is obviously the, the device that's going to start a listener for the for the connections, right? So we're going to do is NC and LVP and we're going to put a port. The port, I'm just going to put 333. Now, what you need to do is now you need to save a file because if you don't, then what's going to happen is it will just display it on the screen, but it's not going to save it. Right, so we're going to put right arrow, which means we're saving to something. So we're going to just put readme.txt, right? And now what's going to happen is if I send in any data on port 3333, what it's going to do is going to set is basically going to save everything to readme.txt, right? So, right, so now what we have is we have a listener. So on Kali or our listening device, Kali can act as an attacker and the server, which is the Linux mid, which is what you're looking seeing right now, is a server, right? So we can sort of imagine that this is a server, right? So we want to transfer files. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use netcat. I'll show you actually, I'll show you the command right now to send the file. So what we need to do is nc nv with the IP address that we want to send to. So in this case, it's 192.168.88.139 and the port number, the port number obviously needs to be the same. So 3333 and left arrow and the data that we want to send or a file, right? So in this case, it's just super secret.txt. And what you're going to get is an output of, it basically says connection to blah, 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 to succeed, right? Now, if you switch back to Kali, as you can see, we get another output, which means connect to, obviously, this means that it has successfully connected or we have something, we, something has happened basically, right? Without me explaining what, God knows what, right? So now, one thing that you would notice is that we have sent a file called supersecret.txt. But because of Linux, and if you know what right arrow does, it basically saves to another file, right? Or up, or basically changes the whole file. So in this case, we're not going to read super secret.txt because there's no such file that exists, right? It doesn't exist. But what we have to read is readme.txt, right? As you can see, because we have saved it to readme.txt and cat readme.txt will basically give us the contents of the file that we have sent. So as you can see, has basically gave me the contents of the file and as you can see successfully transferred right so this is one way to do it this is netcat and it is one of the easiest ways but there's also one other way a little bit faster way if you use a python server which i'll show you in a second how to do this okay so now the second way is to just to use basically python right python is available in most of linux distributions and in this basically to perform this file transfer what you need is you need ssh because this does not work with reverse shells because once you start the server with reverse shell all it does it basically crashes your reverse shell and it, it's not usable anymore so obviously once you get your reverse shell you don't really want to lose it right you want to stabilize it stabilize it or as soon as possible get ssh so you have direct access and unlimited access right okay but in this case what we have obviously i have a terminal so i can use it just like we can imagine that this is SSH, right? So I'm just going to start a server, right? Why are we starting a server? Because the, the server is well, basically, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an FTP web server, right? Allows us to download files, transfer files and host files, right? So I'll show you how this works exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a server. So Python 3, Python M, HTTP server. Now, if you don't put any port after this, right? For example, I'll put port 1111, right? So as you can see, it, it changed the port. If you don't, I would just start on 8000. 8000 is Python's default server, right? So now if I switch to Kali, the files, and basically what we can do now is we can actually check without downloading the files first, what we can do is we can use a terminal to check for the files. So we can do is use just curl with the port number, and as you can see, it displays the files. So we have a super secret.txt as a file, right? Alternatively, what you can use is you can use a browser. So if you just come to the browser, and just use the with the just the same IP address and the port number, it will display the files and you can actually access them, right? Now, if you want to download these files, because you, well, you can really you can no, you can really download it for this way, right? So you can really download it for the browser. But what you can use is you can use the the terminal to get the files, right? So I'll show you how to do this. 
So what you need to do is you need to know the file name. So in this case, we just got, we know the file name, so we can use wget, right? Hey, wget is a very, very important command. And I would suggest learning it because it is useful in certain situations. Right, as you can see, we can just directly paste the command and as you can see, it, transfer it, it transfers it to our device. So what you can do now is I can cat the, uh, the, the file and as you can see, bam, bam, bam. Right, one more thing I want to show you, which is very, very import important, is when you host the server, it is important that you do know that you're hosting it in the right directory. Because if I host it in, in a directory that I do not want to, for example, my files to get exposed, which is obviously a very high probability because remember that when I host the server in, in my, for example, in my home directory, then I will basically expose all the files that I have here and will be accessible to people, right? Unless the permissions are not set. But obviously easy mistake can cause a lot of trouble for you. So make sure that you're setting the server in the correct directory. All right, so want... that'll be it for this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, and please don't forget to also check my other videos, which should be somewhere on the screen. If not, then go to my playlists.